Well, welcome. My name is Mr. Murphy, and in this video, we're going to be looking at lesson 1.4. And specifically in this lesson, we're going to be looking at sequences, and especially arithmetic sequences. We're going to be looking at what is an arithmetic sequence. We're going to look at different ways we could represent a sequence with some different formulas. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about what is an arithmetic sequence. So first off, a sequence is a function whose domain is the natural numbers. Okay, now natural numbers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So we would have, our domain would be our first term, our second term. We're not going to have a domain, in other words, that's going to be decimals. Okay, when we're talking about the terms of a sequence, we'll have the first term, the second term, the third term. There's no such thing as the four and a half term. Okay, they're always going to be natural numbers for our domain. And so an arithmetic sequence then is a sequence with a constant difference between consecutive terms. And we have a special term for that constant difference. We just call it the common difference, or we also use the letter D to represent that value. So what do we mean by that? What are some examples? Well, here's an example of an arithmetic sequence. Because um, if you notice, going from 3 to 8, from 8 to 13, 13 to 18, and 18 to 23, we're all increasing by 5 each time. So this would have a common difference of 5, and so knowing that the common difference is 5, we can then figure out what the next term in the sequence would be. If I just take 23 plus 5, we would get 28. So that sixth term in the sequence would be 28. It's really that simple for an arithmetic sequence. Now, we do have some special ways that we're going to represent arithmetic sequences. One of those is what we call a recursive formula. Now, a recursive formula is nice when I don't know the sequence, and I just given this, I'm just given this formula, and I want to find maybe the first eight terms of the sequence, or the first five terms of the sequence. The arithmetic formula is going to be a very easy way for me to find those first few terms of the sequence. And the reason why it's so easy is because, for one, we start out with the top row. The top row represents whatever the first term in the sequence is going to be. And so that a sub 1 there represents that value of the first term. And then what follows after that, the n equals 1, all that's saying is that's just identifying the fact that this is the first term, n equals 1. So if a sub 1 was 8, we'd be saying that n equals 1, meaning the first term is 8. So that's what the top row represents. In the bottom row, that a sub n minus 1, now it's really important as you're writing this that you don't put any numbers here. It's always going to be a and then a subscript, that means it's going to be lower than the a, n minus 1. Because that whole piece, the a sub n minus 1, represents the phrase previous term. So it's just a shorthand, very quick, easy way. Rather than writing out the words, take the previous term and add 5, we just write a sub n minus 1 to refer to the previous term. And then whatever we're adding each time, that's your value for d. So that's your common difference. And now notice after that we have that n is greater than 1. That piece, all that tells us is, the part that comes before it, the a sub n minus 1 plus whatever our constant difference is, we're only going to use that part after the first term. Okay, so we're not so we already know the first term. And so if we knew the first term was 7, and if our constant difference was 3, we would have 7, n equals 1 on top, on the bottom, we would have a sub n minus 1 plus 3. And if I wanted to find the terms of the sequence, I would just start with 3, or start with 7 rather and then add 3 and get 10, and then add 3 again and get 13, and so on. So you can see that the arithmetic sequence is really easy to find those first few terms, however many they might be, for a sequence. So thinking back to the previous sequence that we were just looking at, if I wanted to come up with a recursive formula for that sequence, some things that we need to remember is we always write a sub n equals, the a sub n at the beginning is just identifying whatever term in the sequence we might be looking for. So to find that term, then we find, use that, what I call the fancy bracket. It's just a little kind of cursive looking bracket. But then you have the first term was 3. And so identify it as such by saying n equals 1. And then after we use that first term of 3 to find the next term in the sequence, we just add 5 each time. So we would have a sub n minus 1 plus 5. Again, notice that the only numbers in the recursive formula is the 3 for your first term and the 5 for your constant difference. Everything else is always going to stay the same. Okay, so that is what a uh, recursive formula looks like. So why don't you guys go ahead and do this one on your own. So I want you to look at these two sequences. I want you to first determine if they represent arithmetic sequences. 
And if it is an arithmetic sequence, I want you to go ahead and find the recursive formula for that sequence. If it's not an arithmetic sequence, so if you're not adding the same amount each time, there's nothing to do other than to say it's not an arithmetic sequence. So go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you did it correctly. All right, let's see how you did. So in that first one, yes, it is an arithmetic sequence. And if you notice, you're subtracting five. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. I thought with an arithmetic sequence, you got to be adding the same amount each time. Isn't subtraction different? Well, subtraction is just adding a negative number. So we can add negative numbers, which would look like subtracting, or we could add positive numbers. Okay, so I don't want that to confuse you. So yes, this is an arithmetic sequence. And so if it is an arithmetic sequence, we want to write down our recursive formula. So the recursive formula for this, we would have the a sub n equals, we would have that fancy bracket, and then that first term is 25. So we'd have 25, and then we would tell the reader that's looking at that, because we're assuming that if someone's looking at the recursive formula, they're not seeing any of the sequence that we had before. So we need to tell them that this 25 is in fact the first term, so we would say n equals one. Then the bottom row, we would have a sub n minus one, and then you could say plus negative 5 if you wanted to, otherwise just writing minus 5 would look better. So we'd have minus 5, and then n is greater than 1, again identifies the fact that we're using that part of the formula from the after the first term. Alright, so what about the second one there? That is not an arithmetic sequence. Um, oh, by the way, going back to the previous one, the next term of that sequence, by the way, would have been 5, because if you subtract 5 from 10, you get 5. But anyhow, Back to the uh, letter B there. That is not an arithmetic sequence. Okay, going from 2 to 4, you're adding 2. From 4 to 7, you're adding 3. From 7 to 12, um, you're adding uh, 5. And so 12 to 13, you're adding 1. That is not that is not an arithmetic sequence. You're not adding the same amount each time. All right. Let's look at another formula. Okay, this is an explicit formula. I might be wondering, why do we need to have two formulas? Well, remember I said on the previous one with the recursive form, that's really handy, it's really nice to use if I want to find like the first four or five terms of a sequence. Because it's repeats, it's a pattern that repeats itself. But the problem with the recursive formula is what if I wanted to find the 50th term in the sequence? I can't just jump and get there right away. In order to get to the 50th term in the sequence using the recursive formula, we'd have to find the first term, then the second term, then the third term, all the way through to be able to get to the 50th term in the sequence. That would be kind that would be time consuming and I'm not always going to want to spend that much time on a problem. So the purpose of an explicit formula is the explicit formula is nice because it'll find any term in a sequence. If I wanted to find the 30th term, I can put 30 into this formula and I can get my answer right away. If I want to find the 100th term of the formula, I'm just going to put 100 into my formula, I'll get my answer right away. Now it's not so easy though. If I wanted to find the first 5 terms of a sequence, the explicit formula is not going to be as easy to use because I have to put one in there, get an answer, then I have to put two in there, get an answer, then I have to put three in there, and get an answer, and that is more time consuming. So both of these formulas have their kind of pros and cons, their advantages and disadvantages. So what does the explicit formula look like? Well, it looks like this. Now, I'm going to give you a heads up. If you look in the book, it is not going to be written in the same order as the way I have it. For some reason, every book I've ever taught out of always has it in the form of a sub 1 plus d, and then in parentheses n minus 1. And the most common mistake that students make when they do that is they take the first term and the d and they just add them together. And that's just, so there's no reason to have it in that particular order. So I found that this order works a lot better. It avoids a lot of common just algebraic mistakes. Uh, so I want you to get in the habit of doing it this way. We have your constant difference times n minus 1 plus your first term. Okay, so that's what those represent. So D, remember, is your constant difference. The A sub 1 represents your first term. The N in this case, not the N minus 1, the N in this case is the term we're trying to find. It remains a variable. So as long as we write our equation, it remains a variable unless we know what term we're looking for. So if I'm looking for the 30th term, then I would put 30 in for N here. But it's not a subscript. Okay, it's on the same level, if you notice, as everything else. But that is what the explicit formula looks like. So in our first sequence, where we had 3, 8, 13, uh, 18, and 23, if I wanted to write an explicit formula for that, remember we were adding 5 each time. So my value for D would have been 5. So we'd have in parentheses n minus 1 plus our first term, which would have been 3. Now if you want, you could leave it like this. Now there's the other option of simplifying it. There'll be sometimes where that'll be easier too. If you distribute the 5 through, you'd have 5n minus 5. 
But then you'd have that negative 5 plus 3, you combine those, and you'd get negative 2. So if I wanted to, I could leave it like this. Otherwise, I'd have the equation 5n minus 2. It's the exact same equation, just in simplified form. So it's, just good, it's important to know the difference between those two, that sometimes you can simplify it, but you don't always have to. So if I wanted to find the 21st term in that sequence, using the recursive formula, that would take me forever, because I'd have to find all 21 terms in the sequence to get to that 21st. With the explicit formula, I just put 21 in for n. So if I did that, I'd have 5 times 21 minus 1 plus 3. Now, don't bother distributing the 5 through. All right, you could, but you're going to just deal with some bigger numbers. Take 21, use the order of operations, do inside parentheses first. 21 minus 1 is 20, and 5 times 20 is 100, and 100 plus 3 would be 103. So the 21st term of the sequence would be 103. So that's how easy the arithmetic, uh, or the explicit formula can be for an arithmetic sequence. Now, sometimes you're going to have to translate between the two. Well, they'll give you a uh, equate, or they'll give you a recursive formula. And they're going to want to ask us to put it uh, or rewrite it as an explicit formula, or vice versa. So let's look at this example where we have that recursive formula, where our first term we know is three. Then to find the next term in the sequence, we're taking the previous term and adding a half each time. So our constant difference is 0.5. So if we wanted to find the explicit formula, we need to identify those pieces. So again, that first term is 3, our constant difference is 0.5. And now we just plug them into the formula. So remember that formula is d times the n minus 1 plus our first term. So the d and the a, and the a sub 1 are the only things that we get replaced with numbers. Everything else is going to stay the same. So our explicit formula would be 0.5 times n minus 1 plus 3. And like I said, you could simplify it by distributing the 0.5, but it's not necessary. Let's look at the next one. The next one, they already give us the, the um, explicit formula. Now, if you notice with this one, I put it in the form that the book sometimes will have it. Okay, so I want you to recognize both ways, but I want you to, if it's, if it's your opportunity to write it, always write it in the explicit formula. Now, the good thing is, is I already checked for you online with your, with your assignment, uh, that if you put it in either format, it will work. So you don't have to worry about typing it in the way the book is teaching it. If you do it the way that I do it, you'll get it correct. So you don't have to worry. So another way to look at this one would be to say that negative 3 times n minus 1 plus 16 would be your equation. So those two equations mean the exact same thing. It's just that if you notice the way that I wrote it, the second way there, you're not going to probably make the mistake of taking 16 minus 3 at the beginning. You're going to know that you have to distribute, if we're going to simplify it, that we're going to distribute the negative 3 for, through first. All right, so now uh, to come up with the ex, uh, recursive formula, though, that's what they're asking us to find, we need to know what's our first term and what's our constant difference. Well, our first term is 16. Our constant difference is negative 3. So when we write our recursive formula, we would say that it's 16 is our first term, so 16 and then comma n equals 1. And then to find the next term of the sequence, we're going to take the previous term, the a sub n minus 1, and then our constant difference, like we said, is negative 3. So we, if you could put plus negative 3 if you want. I like writing minus 3. It looks a lot better. But don't forget about that last part where we have n is greater than 1. That just identifies that the part before it, we would use that after the first term. All right. It's your turn now. So I want you to take these two, or this recursive formula, and write it as an explicit formula. And then for the following example, again, notice that it's written in the form that the book would have it. But that's the explicit formula. I want you to write it as a recursive formula. So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you did those correctly. All right, let's see how you did. With that first one, you should have gotten that your first term is 45 and your constant difference is negative 2. So when you go to put this into your explicit formula, you would have negative 2 times n minus 1 plus that first term, which is 45. How would you do? Did you get that one right? Awesome. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one is already written as an explicit formula, but it's the way the book would have had it. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter. The first term is 1. The constant difference for this is 7. So to write this as a recursive formula, we would identify that first term, like I said, as 1. And then we would take a sub n minus 1 plus that constant difference, which is 7. And again, we would identify that as happening after the first term. All right. Let's look at some story problems now. With this last example, we have a high school auditorium has 18 seats in the first row 
and 26 seats in the fifth row. The number of seats in each row forms an arithmetic sequence. What is an explicit definition for the sequence? Well, let's think about something for a second. What do we know? So we know that there's 18 seats in the first row. What does that have to do with um, the arithmetic sequence? Well, hopefully you recognize that that's the first term. The first term is going to be 18. Well, wait a minute. It doesn't tell us what we're adding by each time. It just tells us that the other piece of information that there's 26 seats in the fifth row. Well, here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take and plug in because we know that the fifth row has um, 26 seats. So when n is 5, your answer is going to be 26. So we're going to plug that information into the explicit formula and use that to solve for a constant difference for our value for d. So sometimes they're not going to give us all the information we need. We're just, but we're going to, they're going to give us enough information though to get what we need. So here's what I mean. If we plug that information in, where we know n is 5, so we'd have our d, which we don't know yet, times n minus 1, so times 5 minus 1, plus our first term, which is 18, that would equal the total number of seats in that fifth row, which is 26 seats. So now we're just going to solve that. Well, 5 minus 1 is 4, so we'd have 4d, or d4, however you want to write it, but 4d plus 18 would equal 26. So then I would subtract 18 from both sides, and 26 minus 18 would be 8. And so then if I just divide both sides by 4, I get my value for d is 2. Now it just it didn't ask for d in the problem. It just says, what is the explicit definition for the sequence? So now I have the information I need, because to write the explicit formula, I need our first term and I need our constant difference. Now we have both of those pieces, so we can plug them both in. So our value for d would be 2, so we'd have 2 times n minus 1 plus 18. And that would be your equation. Now, if they wanted to know what, how many seats are there in the 12th row, if there was another follow-up question, uh, we would take that formula that we just had, we just put 12 in for n. And that's it. So if I did that, 12 minus 1, I know that's 11, times 2 is 22, and 22 plus 18 was 40. So that means in the 22nd row of that auditorium, there's going to be uh, 40 seats. All right. So how about you guys try one on your own? So in this one, Samantha is training for a race. The distance of her training uh, runs, of her training runs, form an arithmetic sequence. She runs one mile the first day and two miles the seventh day. So very similar setup to the previous one, where we know that she ran on the first day. She ran um, one mile, and she ran two miles on the seventh day. Okay, so she's not adding a mile each time. She's adding a fraction of a mile each time. So this one, your answer is going to be your constant difference, which you're going to add each time, is going to be a fraction. Leave it as a fraction, please. Uh, it'll be more exact that way. All right, so why don't you pause the video. Do this one just like we did the previous one. So if you need to, look back, look at your notes to see how we did that one. Uh, but apply that same concept to this one. So hit pause and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you did it correctly. All right, let's see how you did here. So to come up with our equation, again, we know that she ran one mile on the first day, and we're trying to find our value for d, but we also know that on the uh, seventh day, she ran two miles. So n would be seven, your total on the seventh day would be two. So if I just, seven minus one would be six, so we'd have six d plus one is equal to two. If I subtract one from both sides, well, that just gives me 60 equals one. Divide both sides by six, I get one six. Again, leave your answer as a fraction. Because if, if we rounded our answer as a decimal, it's just going to make it so when we go to follow up or do a follow up question like part B, it's not going to be as accurate. Okay, so leave it as a fraction. So our equation then would be one sixth of n minus one plus one would be our expl explicit formula. So let's find our answer for part B then. In part B it says, how far did she run on day 19? Well, we just put 19 in for n. Well, 19 minus 1 would be 18, and 1 sixth of 18 would be 3, and 3 plus 1 would give you a 4. So on the 19th day, she would have run 4 miles. And that's it. So that is how we're doing in this first part of this video. In the next part of the video, we're going to look at something called series, which is taking sequences just one step further. So you'll see that in the next video. But otherwise, good luck as you work on your assignment for this part of the, of the lesson.